lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Amen. Today is Ash Wednesday, the first day in the season of Lent. It's a strange day, and a strange season observed by a strange people, a people called the Church. And part of our strangeness is that we, the Church, mark time differently than the rest of the world. Well, for example, we carve the season of Lent out of our ordinary time to wander with Israel in the wilderness, to be driven by the Spirit with Jesus into the desert, to commit ourselves to disciplines of intensified prayer and fasting and meditation upon Holy Scripture, and all of this in preparation for following Jesus down to Jerusalem, to the temple, to the upper room for a last supper, to the fortress Antonia, the headquarters of the Roman and governor Pontius Pilate, to Golgotha, and the cross of Calvary on Good Friday, and to the empty tomb of Easter Sunday morning. And we begin this strange season with this strange day and its strange ritual of receiving a cross of ashes on our foreheads while attending to the words, Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. This is by far one of the strangest things that we, that strange people known as Christians, do. I remember when I was a child, a friend of mine accompanied me to Ash Wednesday service. Now, he was Christian, but he came from uh, an, a more evangelical Protestant church. And nowadays, I often see that Methodists and Baptists and Presbyterians and even non-denominational evangelicals will uh, observe something like the liturgical seasons and in, that includes Ash Wednesday, but when I was a kid, these churches would have never done something so so Catholic, especially down here in the South. And so my friend had no idea of what to expect from Ash Wednesday service, and he came and he received the ashes on his forehead, and he was freaked out. Let me tell you, he did not know what to make of it. Uh, he was utterly freaked out. And I have to say that that shouldn't be surprising. I mean, if I can put it another way, I think that my friend was completely justified in being freaked out by this experience. <clears throat> this thing of receiving the imposition of ashes in the form of a cross and hearing these words, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return, this is a strange thing that we do. But this year, this year in particular, this strange day in this strange season is made all the more strange because we can't do that strangest thing that we do to observe this day. This Ash Wednesday has been rendered strangely normal because the normal world has been made so strange in this past year. Because the world at this time is so strange, our, obser our observance of Ash Wednesday has been stripped of its strange ritual and thereby made normal, very much like a normal day. And it's because it's been made so normal that this Ash Wednesday is particularly strange for us, the church, this year. And this Ash Wednesday is made strange for us because there are no ashes on this Ash Wednesday. There are no ashes because we aren't gathering in person to observe this day. And we aren't gathering in person because it's not safe to do so for all of our members at the Fort Church. And it isn't safe to gather in person because we're living in a season of pandemic, of course. This pandemic has brought death 
really brought death directly and indirectly to many throughout this land, some of whom some of us have known and cared for. So the imposition of ashes on Ash Wednesday is not happening this Ash Wednesday. And that's okay. Because the imposition of ashes on Ash Wednesday is not a sacrament. What do I mean by that? Well, the sacraments, baptism and Holy Eucharist, are signs of the grace of God that are also the means by which we receive that grace which they signify. For example, baptism is the sign of being immersed and washed by the Holy Spirit of God, united by that Spirit to Christ, and made a member of His resurrected body, dying to our sin, and being raised in Christ, adopted as God's children in and through God's eternal Son. Baptism as a sacrament signifies all of this, but it also does all of this. It isn't just a sign of this grace, it gives us this grace. Well, similarly, the Holy Eucharist is a sign of Christ's body and blood given for us and given to us, but it's not just a sign of this grace. It actually is this grace. Holy Eucharist doesn't just signify Christ's body and blood. It isn't just a sign to remind us that Christ's body was crucified for us and his blood was shed for us. Rather, Holy Eucharist, Eucharist actually feeds us. It actually nourishes us with the very body and blood of Christ. In the Eucharist, Christ actually gives us himself, and this just is grace. Christ gives us his body and blood. Christ gives us his human soul and divinity for our salvation and to sustain us in our pilgrimage through this world of sin and death. Now, even the sacramental rites confirmation, reconciliation, matrimony, holy orders, and anointing, which don't give us grace, as baptism and Eucharist do, nevertheless redirect and reconnect us to the grace given in those two sacraments, baptism and Eucharist. However, the imposition of ashes is not a sacrament. It does not give us grace. And it's it's not even a, a sacramental rite. It doesn't redirect us and reconnect us to the grace given in baptism and Eucharist. It is merely a sign. An important sign, to be sure, but only a sign. What's it a sign of? Well, obviously, it's a sign of our mortality. It's a sign that we will die, a sign that all of us, each and every one of us, will one day die. Even Christ did not escape death, nor shall we. And the imposition of ashes on Ash Wednesday is a sign to remind us, to paraphrase Emily Dickinson's famous poem, that though we may not stop for death, he will kindly stop for us. Ash Wednesday is the beginning of that time we carve out of our ordinary time to remember that our time will come to an end. And in a sense, our time is not our own. It is a time to remember that death seems to reign during this time. We receive the imposition of ashes to remember that we as mortal creatures bound by sin, that for us, death's dark shadow looms over the time allotted to us. Death stands peering back at each of us from the end of our days as the final enemy who takes from us the gift of time given to us 
by our loving Creator. Now this, this is a hard truth. But it's a truth that Christians can bear. It's a, Christ, it's a truth that Christians can hear and a truth that Christians can bear because we know a deeper truth, a more profound truth, a more enduring truth. We can take the time to attend to the reminder that we are dust and to dust we shall return. We can stop for death before death stops for us. We can do this because we know that this great foe, this the last enemy, death himself has been defeated. This is the deeper and more enduring truth that allows us to attend to the truth of death. The more enduring truth is that Jesus Christ, the Lord of time, has conquered death and redeemed our times and in fact has redeemed all time. This redeemed time is called the kingdom of God and the new creation. And our present participation in it is why we, the church, mark time differently than the world around us marks time. We mark our time by the remembrance of Christ's defeat of death through his own death and resurrection. Our participation in his resurrection and our awaiting the time when all time and all of creation will know the fullness of the kingdom of God and be transfigured into the new creation. Or, as we say in our Eucharistic prayer, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In this meantime, wars and conflicts may rage around us. A famine of resources may threaten us and pestilences may afflict us. In this time of pandemic, we may not need the imposition of ashes to remind us that we are dust and to dust we shall return. In this meantime, Death certainly still seems to reign and hold sway over our time. We do not have and we do not need the imposition of ashes to remind us of all this. But we have on this strange day, made normal by these strange times, a word of comfort, a word of hope. We have good news. We have the gospel. Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the Lord of time. He is the Lord of life. He is the Lord of all creation. And he has conquered death. He has redeemed time. In him are reconciliation and peace. In him is an abundance of grace. In him is health and healing and wholeness and life everlasting. All this, and more, he promises to us. All this, and more, he gives to us. And so we take the time on this day to proclaim, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Thank you.